asserts that Morsi joined the mob of plotting and instigations against Syria led by the U.S. Our valiant armed forces restore security and stability to two villages in the eastern Ghouta and destroy terrorist hideouts. President Rouhani calls upon those who respect democracy to address Iran in a suitable way on the basis of mutual interests. Good afternoon. Welcome to our news bulletin. I'm Dania Nizam. An official source in the Syrian Arab Republic asserted that Mohammed Morsi has joined the mob of plotting and instigation led by the U.S. and Israel against Syria through his announcement yesterday of cutting off all relations with Syria following the victories of the Syrian army against terrorism in various parts of Syria. The source said that Syria condemns this irresponsible attitude which reflects Morsi's attempt to carry out the agenda of the Muslim brothers and to ignore the aspirations of the Egyptian people who are keen to achieve the aims of their popular revolt which has become the target of the plots of Morsi and his people of Muslim brothers. The source expressed full confidence that this act does not reflect the will of the brotherly Egyptian people whose strong relations with the Syrian people contributed to the protection of security and stability in this region against all aggressors and invaders since the dawn of history. These victories were culminated by the October War of Liberation against the Israeli enemy. The source pointed out that Morsi's act comes in response to the misleading fatwas of the so-called Union of Muslim Clerics calling for shedding the blood of the Syrian people instead of directing the compass towards the liberation of the usurped land of Palestine. The source called Morsi's act as a service to Israel, the U.S. and their tools in the region. Morsi should have shown such enthusiasm in closing off the Israeli embassy since Israel is killing Palestinian citizens before the eyes of Morsi. In a speech filled with the flavor of sectarianism, the Egyptian President Mohammed Morsi announced yesterday cutting off diplomatic relations with Syria, while the Israeli flag fluttered only a few meters away from his palace. Morsi's act came only one day after Washington's resolution to arm the terrorist gangs in Syria was announced. The Russian Vice President Yuri Oshakov announced that the discussions between President Putin and the Brit British Prime Minister David Cameron in London today would concentrate on various regional and international issues, especially the crisis in Syria. He said that the British and Russian courses in this field are very similar. They want to see an end to violence as soon as possible in addition to preserving Syria's sovereignty and territorial integrity. He pointed out that this meeting would be held at the request of Cameroon and in continuation of the contacts between the Russian president and the British prime minister. Syrian citizens in Australia, together with sympathizers from friendly countries and Australian citizens, organized a march of solidarity with Syria against the plots targeting it. The march was organized by a group named Hands Off Syria. It toured the major streets of Sydney. The marchers condemned the attacks on Syria and the miserable attempts targeting it by the West and some Arab regimes. These plots are confronted by the determination of the Syrian army and the steadfastness of the Syrian people and their unity with their army and leadership. The, members, the marchers announce or denounce the crimes of the terrorist groups who kill innocent citizens. They also expressed appreciation of the sacrifices of the heroic Syrian army in order to restore stability and security to Syria. They asserted their support to the call of consolidating the process of reform and national dialogue. A 
A unit of the Syrian Arab army engaged with an armed group that was committing acts of looting of the citizens' properties and of the services institutions' sabotage at the soap factory in Jorba of Damascus countryside, killing many of the terrorists and injuring others. The clashes also resulted in the seizure of the terrorists' weapons, including automatic guns, bomb launchers, and heavy machine guns. Other units of Syrian Arab army chased members of terrorist groups in the eastern farms of Berzi neighborhood, killing a number of terrorists, including Ahmed al khishan the operation also resulted in the seizure of weapons including war rifles, heavy machine guns and large amounts of ammunition. Our valiant armed forces restored security and stability to the villages of Ain Hassan and Talatatina in the southern countryside of Aleppo. The people of these villages expressed their happiness and gratitude to the army and its sacrifices to restore safety to their villages. They asserted that they stand with the army against terrorism and to defend their homeland. In Homs countryside, and after detecting and pursuing the competent authorities, seized about 1,600 archaeological coins that date back to the Roman age. In addition to potteries that date back to the Byzantine era, the coins were buried in a farm in Jabal Shar, about 47 kilometers northwest of Palmyra. The seized items were handed over to the archaeological directorate in Homs. In Iraq, 24 people were killed and more than 40 others injured in a series of terrorist blasts that took place in three governorates. Iraqi police said that six car bombs exploded in Busra, Kut, Hilla, Hajif, Al Nasiriya, and Al Hamoudiya, south of Iraq, killing 24 people and injuring dozens. In Mosul, gunmen opened fire at a police checkpoint, killing four policemen and in, in injuring five others. The elected Iranian president, Hassan Rouhani, asserted that those who respect democracy and the principles of fair and free dealing on the basis of right and justice should, from now on, address Iran in a suitable way in order to receive convenient replies. In his first message after the elections, Mr. Rouhani said that they should support peace, security and development in this region and in the world through consolidating relations on the basis of mutual interests. He considered the Iranian people as the real winners in these presidential elections. The Iranians have taken a large and solid step to realize their national interest. The presence of the Iranian people on the political stage brings stability and hope to the economic sector and the acceleration of the process of production and the availability of new job opportunities. The Supreme Guide of the Iranian Revolution, Sayyid Ali Khamenei, asserted that the Iranian people were the winners in the presidential elections. In his address after the elections, he pointed out that the massive participation in voting showed the increasing growth of political consciousness and adherence to the sovereignty of the people. It also refutes the plots of Iran's enemies. He called upon the Iranian people to support the elected president sincerely in order to achieve the sublime aspirations which he promised to achieve as he bears his responsibility. The Russian president Vladimir Putin expressed confidence that the election of Mr. Hassan Rouhani would help the friendly country of Iran to prosper and to consolidate Russian-Iranian relations. In a letter addressed to Mr. Rouhani, President Putin expressed readiness to proceed forward in developing cooperation between the two sides in various fields in order to ensure regional security and international stability. In Turkey, tens of thousands of Turks demonstrated in the streets of Istanbul protesting the threats of leader of justice and development government Recep Tayyip Erdogan and the excessive use of power by Turkish police. Violent clashes took place in Taksim Square since dawn today between protesters and Erdogan's forces who raided the square and used excessive power against protesters, firing tear gas and rubber bullets injuring dozens. Erdogan's forces also used bulldozers to raid Gizi Park, pulling out the demonstrators demonstrators' tents, injuring dozens. Thousands of demonstrators crowded in Pishtash neighborhood, less than 100 meters away from Erdogan's office, as hundreds of protesters gathered in Kadikoy neighborhood to cross the Bosphorus Bridge, marching towards the European side. 
in Ankara, protesters, including members of parliament from opposition parties, rallied around Go Koglu Park in an attempt to prevent the police from using excessive force against demonstrators. For more information, you can visit our website, syriaonline.sy. Thank you for joining us. As always, God bless you and long live Syria after the break. It's our economic news with Fani. Good afternoon. The manager of developing the livestock said that the decision of allocating funds for the microfinancing in all the governorates comes according to the available financial resources, indicating that making such funds comes under supporting the breeders and maintaining the livestock. The manager added that the value of the subsidies for the funds is 175 million Syrian pounds, noting that the amount allocated for each fund should not exceed 1,250,000 Syrian pounds. As the benefits of the funds will not go to the state's treasury, rather to the breeders themselves. The Ministry of Industry approved the demand of the manufacturers and the craftsmen about putting their machines and raw material in safe places, as they aim at storing these machines and raw materials in order to maintain them. The Minister also stressed that it, the approval aims at facilitating the measures and enabling the manufacturers and the craftsmen to preserve their materials to overcome the obstacles facing the national industries. The manager of the automatic bakeries in Damascus stressed that the equipment of making bread is available, specifically flour, as there are huge stored amount of it. He also said that the problems of the bakeries during the last period were due to the difficulty in transporting flour from the storehouses and in Damascus countryside, as this problem has been solved by providing it from the bakeries outside Damascus countryside, adding that the government has several choices in transporting the equipment, pointing out that the daily production of Damascus branch has been 200 tons, noting that the production of the reserve bakeries in Damascus is about 400 tons a day, whereas the demand in the current circumstances approaches 1,200 tons a day. The amount of wheat marketed to the general establishment of grains reached more than 265,000 tons. The manager of the establishment clarified that the delivery me mechanism is acceptable, as the marketed amount of barley were about 32.6 thousand tons, while the marketing equipment is available, and the receiving centers are facilitating the procedures, pointing out that the establishment has transferred 20 billion Syrian pounds to the agricultural bank's branches in order to pay the bills of the wheat crops, as the amount of wheat are estimated by the Minister of Agriculture to be 3.6 million tons this season. With this we conclude our news. Thank you for watching and goodbye.